So this one morning, I come down from flying, and uh, there's a note to see the squadron commander. Well, okay, I'll go see the squadron commander. So I walked into his office, and we shut the door. He said, uh, if you don't mind, would you shut the door? I said, I don't mind. So I shut the door, and he said, uh, why did you flip off Pete? And I'm thinking to myself, why did I flip off Pete? Well, uh, I wasn't quite sure what he meant, so I said, not quite sure what you mean. He said, well, as you were taxing by the RSU, he said, Pete said you looked over at him and flipped him off. I said, well, I did. And I said, I don't know why I did. It just seemed like the thing to do. I said, Pete looked over at me, and I thought, well, hell. So that was it. A couple years earlier, I had been uh, on exchange and on exchange tour with the Royal Australian Air Force, and at that time I was um, at one time I was up at Amberley, RAF Base Amberley, uh, visiting the F one eleven unit up there, and uh, their squadron commander called uh, early in the morning and said he was going to come by and pick me up at my uh, at my quarters. Okay, great. So he told me he'd be in a staff car, so he said, just hop out front, and he said, I'll come by and pick you up. So I go walking out front, I'm standing there, and pretty soon I see the staff car come up, uh, coming down the road. I look over, and sure enough, it's Pidge coming to pick me up. Well, as he gets closer, Pidge looks at me and flips me off <laughs> and keeps going. I thought it was hilarious. It was just funny as hell, or at least so I thought so. That's my sixth sense of humor. So Pidge goes around the block, comes back, stops, and picks me up. He says, oh, was that you? He says, I guess I kind of missed you. Whatever. Anyway, we just laughed about it, and that was it. That was all there is to it. So as I'm taxiing out this mor that morning, I look over at the RSU, and I see the guy looking at me, and I, okay, flip off. That was it. There was nothing more to it. it wasn't I didn't know who the hell was in um, the RSU, much less Pete. Anyway, uh, I had met Pete sometime before. He um, had come into the squadron and uh, as part of his orientation he had to monitor uh, aspects of uh, our operation. So he comes in and uh, this one morning he comes down to uh, my office. I was the chief of check section at that time and he needed to monitor a check pilot given a ground about. Well I had one with this fellow and uh, the kid tanked it really tanked it bad. Now in those days, uh, the ground evals were two hours. And so we would um, give them scenarios, ask questions, and play stump the dummy. And uh, for an hour, then we'd take a 10 minute break and then we'd bring them back and complete the, um, the profile, the check ride. Well, at halftime, Pete came up and he says, hey boss, he says, why are you giving him another hour? He says, that guy's so stupid, you ought to take him out now. And I, I said, yeah, I know. But I said, this one's kind of sensitive, so we're going to play it by the book. And we did. Anyway, that's how I met Pete. And I liked Pete. Uh, I enjoyed uh, enjoyed seeing him around the squadron and um, enjoyed his company. And that was all there was to it. So I tracked Pete down, I think, and apologized. And I didn't mean to upset. It was just done in jest. And that was it. Never heard any more about it. Well, that was in 19... 86 or 85, somewhere in that period. Now crank the clock ahead about uh, 20 years. 2006, the spring of 2006. I'm um, having my last check ride at Northwest Airlines in the A320. Pete is my flight examiner, flight uh, check airman, I guess uh, more appropriate. So we brief the profile and I go out, fly the check ride, and we end up with about 30 minutes left on the simulator. And uh, he says, uh, hey, Bob, is there anything you, you'd like to do before we shut it down? And I said, you know, I've often wondered if I had an airplane that I'd lost both engines, if I could glide it into a full stop. He said, well, let's see. So he set me up. Uh, typically, we would set up at 30 miles from the field, 10,000 feet. That's what your, your target was. So he set me up right over uh, Salt Lake City uh, Airport at 10,000 feet, perpendicular to the runway. Uh, we fired up the APU, the auxiliary power unit, and uh, he said, are you ready to go? And I said, you bet. So he shut down both engines and turned me loose. And I had a ball, just had a ball. Uh, we start chugging downhill, and uh, I'm sitting there, I've got 
this hand on a stick and this hand on the throttles. And soon it dawned on me, what are you doing with these hands on the, this hand on the throttle? There's no engines. Okay, but it's really uncomfortable what to do with this hand when you don't have any throttles. But anyway, so we come downhill. I make a turn to uh, downwind, uh, taking a look at uh, just kind of sensing things, I guess, if you will. And um, using the TLR system, uh, that looks about right, feels about right. Made a turn to base. Now, as I make a turn to base, we had uh, I dialed up the ILS, the instrument landing system. So I had uh, glide path. And soon I had localizer azimuth um, information coming to me. And I was pretty close to it, but as I, uh, as I made that turn to base and started picking that up. But then I made a dog leg and, and uh, the information became a lot more accurate and I could uh, make uh, better adjustments. So I'm coming around and then I turn to final and about eight miles out maybe. And uh, at that time I'm on glide slope, on glide path. So now it's all a matter of timing, a timing when to put your flaps down and when to put the gear down because um, probably not going to retract either of them. You're not going around. You don't have any motors. So I got the flaps down, started bleeding off the airspeed to the target speed, and then a um, couple miles out, maybe put the gear down, and the airspeed began decaying and continued to, de to decay as we came across the runway threshold. And I flared and touched down about 1,500, 1,800 feet down the runway and was able to glide it to a stop. Um, and like I said, I just had a ball. That was a fun approach and landing. And I'll always be grateful to Pete for letting me, uh, let me play on that last uh, simulator approach. Um, that's something even today, um, what's it been, 15 years after... Uh, almost 16 years after um, that approach, I still get a kick out of it and I still enjoy it. And I'm still grateful for Pete to, uh, for allowing me to do that. So Pete, here's to you.